Uh, North Carolina's AG Josh Stein is one of 20 state AGs suing the USPS over its practices. Josh Stein joins us this morning. Mr. AG, good to have you with us. Pleasure to be with you this morning. What's on the line for DeJoy tomorrow? Well, I think Congress needs to do its proper function, which is to provide critical oversight and funding. Uh, and so Congress has an important role to, to make sure there aren't problems with conflicts of interest. My concern as the Attorney General of North Carolina is to make sure the law is followed and that the post office is protected. He instituted a series of dramatic changes telling postal carriers that they had to abandon their route before the mail was delivered, to leave mail on the floor. They have disassembled sorting machines all across the country, including in Charlotte and Fayetteville. These are all being done within weeks of a major election. Uh, but it's not only about the election. We've got critical for small business. Rural North Carolina depends on the Postal Service. Veterans get their medicine. Seniors get their Social Security checks. I'm going to do everything I can to protect the good functioning of our U.S. Postal Service. General Stein, thank you so much for being here. I hate to put you in the position of being a Trump, a Trump translator. Uh, but what the president said yesterday was at least suggesting perhaps illegal conduct. He is tweeting this morning, uh, I'm going to call it an effort to clean it up. I'm not sure that's the right phrase or not. Uh, but the president, in a series of tweets, based on massive number of unsolicited and solicited ballots, he says people should make sure your vote. He said, sign and mail in your early vote as, po as early as possible, and then go to a polling place or an early voting location to make sure it has been tabulated. Um, my th understanding was the whole thought of having increased early voting was to avoid crowds at polling places in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, is that responsible of the president to say, cast your early ballot, but then also show up at a polling place to make sure it's been received and tabulated? It's, it's very poor advice, John. They have a system here, and we have a really strong election administration system here in North Carolina that ensures that every eligible voter can vote easily, safely, and securely. When you mail in your absentee ballot, you can track it online, and it will show on the website that your ballot has been received. There is zero reason to go vote in person once you've mailed in your ballot. U.S. Attorney General Bill Barr sort of tacitly also endorsing these claims. Let's listen to what he said to CNN's Wolf Blitzer on Wednesday. I don't know what the law in the particular state says. You can't vote twice. Well, I don't know what the law in the particular state says and when that vote becomes yes, final. Are you surprised there that he wasn't able to black and white say that this is illegal? Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous because not only is it illegal in every single state in this country, it is a federal violation as well. He should know that. Look, we want people to vote. And in North Carolina, we're actually the first state in the country that sent out mail-in ballots mm -hmm. starting on the 4th. We sent out the Just first wave it. of ballots. And yeah, mm -hmm. a number of them got delivered today. Uh, and people are really excited. It's all over social media that they've got their ballots. If you get your ballot in plenty of time and mail it back in, the odds that it will be lost are practically nil. The worry we have about the Postal Service is that it will be slow in delivery, and that's why we urge people to turn your ballot back around and get it in the mail as soon as possible, and then track it online. There's a, that is such a more efficient way and legal way to know that your ballot was received. Do not do what the president said. It's against the law. Joining us now is the Attorney General of the state of North Carolina, Josh Stein. Uh, I'm so glad you're with us this morning because Chuck Schumer says you are the exact right person to lead an investigation on this. So where does it stand? Well, first of all, the, the idea that somebody would make a contribution uh, and then be reimbursed by a corporation or an individual, that's a straw donor, uh, that would be a violation of the law. And... Clearly, any credible allegations along those lines need to be uh, investigated to determine whether the law was violated, whether it's state law or federal. So base, base, there is actually a role for both federal and state authorities. In North Carolina, the State Board of Elections is the organization that investigates campaign finance violations, and then they will make a referral to a local district attorney. Uh, I am the counsel to the state board, and sometimes I will uh, assist local district attorneys in prosecuting cases. Therefore, I can't get into the specifics of any uh, particular case. 
Can you say if you've confirmed any of the Washington Post reporting? Uh, I, I can't. Uh, I can't. I, I can just say that any allegation that's this serious merits investigation. All right, then let's just say it's true. What the Washington Post is reporting is true, and he did pressure employees uh, and then later reimburse them. If that were the case, what would the consequences be? Uh, to give for a corporation to reimburse an employee for a political contribution uh, would be a felony in North Carolina. And for felonies, there are no statute of limitations.